I just want to take a few minutes to kind of set the stage about uh, what we're seeing in Ukraine as we talk with our U.S. partners, our Ukrainian colleagues, and uh, you know where we're at in this stage of the war. And I think, first of all, it's fair to say that uh, the counteroffensive is going slower than anticipated, uh, although the Ukrainians uh, are, are telling us that uh, they're and continuing to emphasize that they're still on track. They're taking ground along three axes of advance across this uh, vast front line that stretches about 600 miles. And uh, we've seen the reports of uh, Ukrainians in the north around Bakhmut retaking lots of territory that the Russians uh, uh, claimed over the past winter time. Uh, there's a middle axis uh, down between Zaporizhia and uh, Donetsk headed for Berdyansk. And then there's a third axis, uh, which is uh, looks like it's headed for uh, Melitopol. And those two axes in the south are uh, the headed directly for the Black Sea. And if the Ukrainians are able uh, to successfully push those axes to the furthest extent, uh, they're going to effectively cut the Russian military in half. They're going to isolate uh, a good chunk of the Russian military that uh, that stretches from Crimea all the way to Donetsk, and it's going to put the Russians in a huge bind. The Ukrainian army is uh, trying to do something that has never been done before. Uh, trying to do a large, extensive combined arms operation uh, with new equipment, uh, with troops that aren't familiar with that type of operation to that type of scale. And they're trying to do it all with a shortage of artillery ammunition, or at least a relative shortage compared to what the Russians bring to the table, and lack of uh, air power. Uh, they're finding that the Russians are controlling localized parts of uh, parts of the air and giving them trouble. So the undertaking that the Ukrainians are uh, are doing unprecedented, uh, difficult, challenging, yet they're still uh, able to make some progress. We are going to put up a few slides to talk about what Spirit of America has been doing. Uh, so just to summarize, we have so far provided over 250 tons and over $32 million worth of non-lethal aid to Ukraine since last February of 2022. Uh, so some uh, key points to highlight is over 100 drones, 74 vehicles, uh, refurbished over 137 trucks, and uh, recently we have really increased the amount of communications gear that we have provided. Uh, to date, Spirit of America has provided over 100 surveillance drones to the Ukrainian Special Forces and to specific elite UAV units. Uh, so if you're asking why are drones so important, um, quite frankly, they are redefining warfare. Uh, the Ukrainians primarily use the drones for reconnaissance, and that is one of the reasons why they often seem a step or two ahead of Russians on the battlefield. Um, they've also been using drones for directing artillery fire, and uh, in many cases, they are also building and using drones to conduct direct attacks on the Russian infantry. Uh, a new project that we have recently launched here is to support the manufacturing of decoys. Uh, so decoys have been used by militaries for centuries, uh, notably in World War II and Operation Fortitude, uh, during which Allied forces created a fake decoy army in England to deceive the Germans about their true intentions to attack further north, uh, further west in Normandy. Uh, so U.S. and coalition forces confirm the need to us for decoys to be used in Ukraine. However, they are not able to provide any or as many as need to be provided because they are, of course, prioritizing lethal aid. So we are currently executing a project to buy Ukrainian-made decoys that will imitate various pieces of equipment, which the Ukrainian general staff will employ along the front lines. And you can see one pictured here. Uh, so this will result in not only deception to enable Ukrainian movements and to blunder Russian planning, but it will also waste Russian munitions and save Western donated equipment and, of course, save Ukrainian lives. Why is private assistance like Spirit of America's needed? Uh, is, isn't government already doing everything that's required? Uh, the short answer is no, uh, government is not able to provide everything that is needed. Uh, one of the uh, colonels at the Security Assistance Group for Ukraine told us, uh, if I need something urgent, surgical, or precise, our only option is Spirit of America, and we have no way to purchase these needs. Uh, so there truly is a gap when it comes to uh, immediate needs, when it comes to equipment that is uh, better procured commercially instead of through government contract. And uh, of course, uh, due to attrition, the equipment needs are constantly churning and constantly coming to the coalition partners, the United States, and to organizations like us.